George Washington Carver, who was a great man of his race, did some marvelous things. He took a sweet potato and he made 150 commercial uses out of it. It was he who said that if you can write a better book, preach a better sermon, or even make a better mouse trap, you can build your house in the woods and the world will be the path to your door. And he demonstrated it. He took a peanut, what we used to call a little East Texas goober, <laughs> and made 300 commercial uses out of it. If he's living now, he'd probably be vice president with Mr. Carter. By that time, the world had beat a trail to his door. Mr. Carver sat there with his black face, looked with his um, confidence and dignity in the face of these important men that came to see him. And they said, uh, Mr. Carver, we're concerned about what you found out and what you've learned, and we'd like to know the secret of it. He picked up an old black back book, same one I got in my hand, like it. The men looked at each other and looked at him with a puzzled look, and they said, we've read through that book, um, but we've never found anything about the sweet potato and the peanut. With a twinkle in his revealing eye, he said, That's right, gentlemen. But he said, When I read that book, I met the one who made both of them, and he told me what to do with them. <laughs> this is the book that makes great men, great homes, and a great nation. It's been voted out of the school, kicked out of the home, and misused in the church. But look at the shape we're in tonight. I give you some clippings of one day in the mail. I do not take a paper. This article says clothing will become optional at apartment site. That's Austin, Texas. Won't have to have any clothes to live there. They live worse than dogs. I call them immoral rats. Roaches and leeches on society. Here's an article said drinking damages the brain permanently. Most of us have known that all the time. Some sad things happen. Violence, near tragedy, mar youth's booze pill party, slicing wrists, fighting, going to the hospital, taking what they call a legend drug. Stacy Holm, given conditional 90 day license. For four decades, they've operated a home for people that are retarded. Among the other improvements the home will have to make to meet minimum child care standards are approved and posted menus, fire drills scheduled in conjunction with the fire department, training program planned for each resident, changes in personnel. That means the state picks them out. That's what they've been trying to do to us. We pick our own personnel with the help of the Lord. Four decades of service. Notice this. While praising Mrs. Smith's devotion to handicapped children during a time 
when there were few public facilities for the retarded. Mr. Parham also said, love is not enough. Most people don't know what love is. Here's the testimony of a girl that came in the mail. Once I was an innocent, beautiful, virtuous, religious, ambitious girl. I went to school and had lofty ideals of doing things in life. I hope someday to have a good husband and a happy home. I love my church. I believe my Bible. I went to Sunday school, inspired to help the needy. I was much loved and admired by my friends. Then, from some whom I thought to be my friends too, I caught the repeal fever. I bobbed my hair, rolled my stockings, cut off my skirts, penciled my fingernails. I was made to believe that my happiness depended on being smart. That only popularity, pleasure, and a sport life were ideal. was told that everybody was doing it. After hearing the cigarette advertisements over the radio, seeing them in magazines and on the billboards, and watching my so-called friends indulging, I was influenced to smoke. Got a great kick out of sitting in public places puffing smoke in others' faces, having lost my desire to go to church or to be with church folks. I went with the crowds to the dance halls, roadhouses, beer gardens, cocktail rooms. I soon became brazen enough to call for a drink at the bar. I learned to gamble, played the races, had many late-hour dates. Now, I've had my flame, have been a modern girl, have had my personal liberty. My virtue's gone, my religion is gone, my old-time Good friends are gone. My beauty is gone. My pride and holy ideals are gone. Here I am, an ugly, bleary-eyed, blotched face, cigarette smoking, half-crazed, drunken shot. I've repealed everything that was good, noble, refined, beautiful, moral, and spiritual in my life. The few friends I have left are as miserable as I. My body's diseased. My heart's broken. My noble ideals are crushed. My motherly instincts are dead. My good family name is disgraced. My character is ruined. My ambition is gone. My past is evil. My present is hell. My future is dark. Here I am. Nothing but just a poor, lost 17-year-old girl. Compromise. Too many things to say to get them all in. Dear Anne, first it was pot, then pills, next the needle. What do you say when your mother asks you where you've been till 3 a.m.? Do you tell her you've been in the cemetery waiting for your, for your supplier to show up? When he doesn't, you have to hit the bottle to kill the pain and go to school five hours later. Bombed out of your gourd. What do you say when the girls in gym class Ask about the needle marks on your arms. Have you ever gotten the cold sweats in history class and prayed to God no one notices? Half an hour before the softball game, you gup a couple of downers to help you get through it. It works pretty good. No one suspects a thing, or so it seems. When you have no good veins left, you try a place you've heard about. So you lift your tongue, jam the needle in, but you miss. So you pull it out and keep trying till you get hold of one. Do you know how it feels to want to die, but not have the guts to kill yourself? I am 17 years old. You say, Brother Olaf, what's the problem? Nude therapy held at church. That's hell's therapy. Let the pulpit get straight. You people get out of a bunch of your dead churches and wake up and start living the gospel. I declared self-declared lesbian is to be ordained into the Episcopal priesthood Monday, New York City. She thinks opposition to ordination of women as Episcopal priest is so strong that my being gay, if it comes up, will be a sort of a footnote. But I'm glad that the Episcopalians in Corpus Christi registered their vote. This is what they said. They voted unanimously to publicly express its unalterable opposition to the ordination of confessed, unrepentant, and practicing homosexuals and lesbians. How far are we going? 
All this is in one day's mail, clipping. Fifteen tons of pot found aboard. Stranded boat. Motors running. The fellows had fled. High discipline school eyed for troublemakers. They said we're going to get some high discipline for the troublemakers. We've had it all the time. State just didn't like it. Bible discipline is the answer. This is interesting. Urges turn television off week. Whole week they said cut it off. I'd suggest that. If it works, don't ever turn it back on. Let me ask you a question. How would we ever memorize what we memorize? Have the convictions we have if we watch the boob tube? How would we ever do all we're doing out here if we ever had all the modern junk that people have across this country? Woman confesses killing her girls. Mrs. Davis, who was separated from her husband, told Judge Henry E. Shaw of Delaware County Common Police Court she left her daughters, Laura and Joe, 18 months, Christine, two and a half, Tonya, three, bound in plastic bags in three different rural locations, two in park trash cans, one in field. I'm leading up to something. I notice where the multi-billionaire died of malnutrition. He couldn't take it with him, could he? Teenagers, a little 13-year-old girl killed herself in a fit of depression over the suicide of comedian Freddie Prinz. Lynn Barilla died at Verdugo Hills Hospital late Tuesday afternoon, shooting herself in the head. Left a note citing the deaths of friends, a family friend, identified only as Barney. And uh, she said, I don't have anything to live for. I'd like to be buried next to or as close as possible to Freddie Prinze, my favorite actor in Forest Lawn. Her death followed by two days the jail cell suicide of David F. Warren, a 20-year-old Bay City, Michigan prisoner, left the note and said, if Freddie can do it, so can I. All over the country, people are choosing the wrong heroes. Choose Jesus for your hero. He'll never disappoint you. They killed him, but he got up on the third day. In the message tonight, there was a couple of men, a father and a son. One of them's name was Nebuchadnezzar. His son's name was Belshazzar. And the daddy played fast and loose, got filled with pride, bragged about his kingdom and his accomplishments. And God pitched him in the pasture to eat grass like the oxen. His body was wet with the dew of heaven until he learned that God reigned on earth like he did in heaven. But he set a rotten example for his son, Belshazzar the playboy. Called a thousand of his lords and concubines and all of the entertainment group. And in the midst of it, a strange hand began to write on the wall. And the wiseacres, the soothsayers, the fortune tellers, the astrologers, the prognosticators, the wiseacres of the day, they couldn't read it. That's what our trouble is now. <clears throat> our people who are in high circles can't read the handwriting on the wall. And they won't believe it when I read it to them. Belshazzar, there's a preacher coming to see you. His name is Daniel. Daniel came and said, Belshazzar, your dad had a kingdom. He said, yes. Whom he would he slew? Whom he would he put down? Whom he would he lifted up? But he said, there came a day when pride ruled his wicked heart. He was cast out of his kingdom. And thou, his son, O Belshazzar, though thou knewest all this, hast not humbled thine heart. 
The kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Thou art weighed in the balances and found wanting. That's the message for America. Not enough merit in your soul to balance the scales of God. You've been feasting and playing when you ought to have been fasting and praying. The Assyrian army is knocking at your gate. Tonight, your soul's going to be required. Reminds you of the rich man made a bumper crop, built his bigger barns, or at least drew his plans. God walked into his drawing room and said, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee, and then who shall these goods be? You'd say, Brother Olaf, what is the hope? Our blessed hope is the soon coming of our Savior. I remind you of the end time sin signs. Number one, violence. Number two, breakdown of the home. Dear friend, your children don't belong to the state, they belong to the parents. The church doesn't belong to the state, it belongs to God. Jesus is the head of the church. The Bible's our textbook. The Holy Spirit's our guide. And law of love is our inspiration. The Bible said, as you would that men should do to you, do you even so to them. This is the law. The Bible said, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with everything you have. Love your neighbor. On these two hang all the law. The Bible says, bear you one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. So fulfill the law of Christ, the love. Dear friend, the law of the Lord is still perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is still sure. The Spirit of the Lord and the law of the land and the law of faith. You couldn't call this an accident. Our people out across this nation, when you see all these boys and girls, some of them have not learned to smile real good yet. They've not lived in the land of smiles. If you could have seen them when they came in, degraded, depraved, miserable, rebellious, and full of hate, and see them tonight, you'd know that Christ has redeemed their soul and their life and give them something worth living for. Have we gone too far as a nation? Is the Bible rejected? Thirty-three years ago I drove into this city this month I never dreamed when I saw Sheriff Harney, John Harney. I never knew when he gave me a permit to go inside the jail, be locked up with the men, and preach to them each week. I never knew that one day I'd be locked up in the jail, sentenced three times to the same racist county jail for getting all these out of jail. I never knew that. Further are we going before God drops judgment? What do you think is going on in the country during this frozen winter? People are starving everywhere, freezing everywhere, drought in California, and trouble all over the world. God's going to get our attention. We're going to face famine and pestilence and violence, and we've already faced war and have been bled white. America has come to the place when it seems she can't win any more wars. I was born on June the 28th, 1914, the day World War I broke out. When America got in it, the old-fashioned prayer mothers went to their prayer closets and prayed and wept in a few days. November the 11th, 1918, rolled around, the war was over. Oh, that we could return to God and let him have his way. Mothers and dads, why don't you give your children what we're giving ours? Our children are diseased with parentitis. Parents that won't pray, won't read the Bible. 
Some of you thought we've been a little radical in our stand, but at least it works. You've seen a demonstration of the cleanest boys and girls you've ever seen. And the saddest day in Texas history was when they closed these homes right here. And 300 girls and 100 boys stumbled out through the dark to begin dying within four days. And the people of Corpus Christi, I'm going to say now, you'll be responsible if these homes ever close again. You'd say, well, why don't you come under? Come under what? I'm coming under the Word of God, and that's what's done the job. I'm not obligated to swap my Bible for man-made rules, upgraded, and all the rest of it. These don't have to be upgraded. You don't even find our home with any of these modern translations. All the good news for modern men we need is the King James Version of the Bible. Hey, 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 yes. This is what has changed our lives. I must give you an illustration I've get, not given in many, I guess, a number of years. I want to explain if I can. I realize the gospel has to be revealed, but I want to explain the best I can. Talk about discipline. In a little old town, wicked and ungodly, and um, some of the ruffians and roughnecks of the uh, country was living. A fellow went into town and said, Sir, I understand you don't have a school. He said, No, sir. We're not able to keep a school teacher. We've got some roughnecks. They've given all of them out in this little old mountain town. He said, I'd like to put in my application. He said, Sir, I don't think you'd ever stay. He said, I'll risk that. They gave him a job. He got to the school, called that bunch of boys and girls together, and he said, Now, folks, you're all going to have to help me. He said, Let's set up some rules and regulations. How about that? Well, they said, Okay. He said, um, What do you think um, we ought to have in the way of rules? One of them said, I think we ought to have a rule for cheating. And they put out the punishment. One of them said, I think we ought to have a rule for stealing. Nobody steals around here. So why do you think the punishment? He said, 20 licks. He said, okay. He just put them down. He made them put them all down. School started. And uh, they were going along. And a uh, big old boy called Big Jim came up and said, somebody stole my lunch. He said, I want you to find it. They found a little old boy they called Little Tom. The little fella back there undernourished, emaciated. I said, did you get it? And he said, yes, sir. Teacher called the class together. That's back before the days of welfare when they just punish him publicly. <laughs> called the little boy and said, Tom, come up. The little boy came up. Just a little tiny sort of a fellow. Old Big Jim saw him. He said, um, Twenty stripes. Said you can pull off your coat. Had it pinned old safety pin. Old coat hung down almost to his knees. Said yes, sir. He fumbled with the old safety pin and he never did get it loose. He said, Go ahead. Said you stole and we're going by the rules and finally got it loose and opened the coat. Didn't have on a shirt or undershirt. The old banker's bare. A little web sticking out. Teacher got the big old paddle. Looked at that little old frail boy. Things got so quiet in that little old classroom. And a big old boy come walking down there. That's Big Jim. He said, sir, that little old boy's not strong enough to take it. I didn't know it's him that got my lunch. But he said, I, I want the rules enforced, but he said, I'd like to take his licks. Teacher said, all right, student body. And old Jim made bared his back, took the licks, and the little boy went free. The little boy looked up at big Jim and said, thank you, Jim. He said, what do you mean? I just mean that I got caught. I got caught stealing. I was a sinner. I was born like that, lived like that. 
I had to face the punishment. And I had a big buck that came along. Jesus Christ said to the Father, I want to take his licks for him. You know what I'm saying tonight? Thank you, dear Jesus, for saving Lester Olaf. Thank you for calling him to preach. Thank you for providing all these 45 years in a wonderful ministry. Girls and boys, mothers and dads, do you realize that Jesus Christ is willing and able and mighty to save right now if you put your trust in him? He said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I'll give you rest. You say, what's the answer to the blood of Jesus Christ? Won't you trust him tonight? Believe on him with all of your heart. You say, Brother Olaf, what is your desire? Our theme song for this year. Oh, to be like me. Like to come to hey, thank you, dear Lord. Right now. Right now. Victor, why don't you come to Christ? Come on. Come in thy sweetness. Come in thy sweetness. Somebody will help you here. Come on. What did the Lord say to you? Deep on my heart. Oh, to be like Visitors, are you right with the Lord tonight? Is your home doing all right? Some of my friends are here tonight that drifted away from God. Why don't you come up now? You're not happy like you used to be. Because you're not holy like you used to be. Come on. Come on. That's right. Come on. Come in Stamp thine on me. Deep on my heart. Mothers and dads, why don't you come? Oh, to me. Are you going on the way you've been going? God brought you here tonight. Wake you up. Tune you up. Bring you up to concert pitch. Why don't you come, mothers and dads? Kneel right here. Let the Lord solve your problems. Save your soul. Forgive me. Come on. That's right. That's right. Come on. Come in thy fullness. Oh Lord. I want to do thy will. Oh Lord. Take me. Break me. Mold me. Amen. Amen. Come on. Father, 
We pray in Jesus' name for these who come to the altar tonight. We thank you for everyone. Lord, no doubt some feel a little strange tonight. Long time since some have been in the house of God. Speak to their hearts. Cause them to know that we love them, and most of all, Jesus loves them. Bless the homes represented. In Jesus' sweet and precious name we pray.